Dr. Watson, now what about the copper beaches? It was uh, a cold, gloomy morning in early spring. We were sitting on either side of a cheery fire in our rooms in Baker Street. Holmes had been silent and moody all morning, smoking his long cherrywood pipe, which usually displaced his favorite clay when he was in a disputatious mood. Altogether, he was in no sweet temper. Matches, matches, where are the matches? Look at that confounded fog. What happens to all the matches in this house, I'd like to know? Oh, my dear Holmes, why not use the tongs and a live coal if you want to relight your pipe? Mm. No, I've burned myself. For heaven's sake, Holmes, stop spluttering. I say something's annoying you. Why don't you get it off your chest? It's that latest book of yours. Hmm? Sensationalism, Watson, rank sensationalism. You're always placing the emphasis on the crime. Crime, logic, is rare. You should stress the logic. You've degraded what should have been a course of lectures into a series of tales. Now, really, Holmes, it's not logical. You're always complaining that crime is falling off. You say there are no first-class criminals left. Quite. And therefore, if you depend on the crime to hold your readers, you'll soon be a back number. Criminals. <laughs> They've lost all their enterprise and originality. Might it be degenerating into an agency for recovering lost lead pencils and giving good advice to young ladies from boarding school? <laughs> advice to the love lord, eh? Well, look at this. This note that came in the morning post. Yes, the last straw, that's what it is. Here, read it. Dear me, let me see. Dear Mr. Holmes, I'm very anxious to consult you as to whether I should or should not accept a situation which has been offered me as governess. I shall call at half past ten tomorrow if I do not inconvenience you. Yours faithfully, Violet Hunter. But it's almost eleven now. Exactly. She's late, just like a woman. I, s I say, Holmes, this must be the young lady now walking briskly up the street. Let me see. Hmm, brisk, purposeful manner, nice, bright, intelligent face. Yes, she's stopping at our door. There may be something in this case after all, my dear Watson. Yes, she's not the hysterical sort that makes a fuss over nothing. Shh, here she is. Come in. Oh, how do you do? This is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Quite. And this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. How do you how do? How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thank you. I trust you'll excuse my troubling you, Mr. Holmes, but I've had a very strange experience... And as I have no relations of any sort to advise me, I thought I'd best come to you. I shall be happy to do anything I can. I, um, I've been a governess for five years in the family of Colonel Spence Munro. He's been transferred to Nova Scotia, so that for the last few months I've been without a situation. But the money I had saved began to run out. I... I was at my wit's end. Go on. Yesterday, I called at a well-known employment agency run by a Miss Stoper. When I arrived, the outer office was filled with young ladies looking for situations. I was told to wait. I did so. After about half an hour, my name was called out. Well, the door to Miss Stoper's private office was ajar. Seated beside her was a prodigiously stout man with a round, smiling face and a heavy chin. His eyes were like two little slits. Come in, my dear. Come in. Uh, Mr. Rucastle, this is Miss... Uh, oh, yes. What is your name, my dear? Miss Hunter. Violet Hunter. Oh, yes. Violet Hunter. Capital, capital. I couldn't ask for anything better. I'm sure you will do, Miss Hunter. I, uh, I hope so, Mr. Rucastle. You're looking for a situation as governess? Yes, sir. Uh, what salary do you ask? Well, I, I had four pounds a month in my last place. Four pounds? Sweating. Rank sweating. How anyone could have the audacity to offer that to a lady with with such attraction, such accomplishments. Well, my, my accomplishments may not be all you expect, Mr. Rucastle. A little French, a little German, music and drawing. <laughs> my dear Miss Hunter, all that's beside the question. The point is, are you or are you not a lady? Well... The answer is yes. A lady fitted for the rearing of a child who may someday play a considerable part in the history of this country. Your salary with me, madam, would commence at a hundred pounds a year. A hundred? Oh, Mr. Rocastle. Furthermore, it's my custom to advance my young ladies half their salary beforehand. Well, may I ask where you live, Mr. Rocastle? Hampshire. Charming rural spot. The Copper Beaches is the name of the place, five miles north of Winchester. The dearest old house. And... And what would be my duties? One child, a dear little romper age six. Oh, if you could see him killing cockroaches with a slipper. Smack, smack, smack. Three God before you could wink. <laughs> well, my sole duty then is to take care of this 
this child. Well, I, I am sure your good sense would suggest that you obey any little commands which my wife, wife might give. Well, I should be happy to make myself useful. In dress, for example. We're fatty people, fatty but kind-hearted. If you were asked to wear a particular dress that we might give you, you, you wouldn't object to our little whim, eh? Why? Well, no. Or to, to sit here or there. That wouldn't be offensive to you? Why, why, no. Or to cut your hair short before you came to us? My, my hair? Oh, yes, it's, it's quite essential. It's, it's a little fancy of my wife's, you see. And ladies' fancies, my dear Miss Hunter, they must be consulted. But, but my hair. Oh, no, I couldn't. No? What a pity. In that case, Miss Stoper, I'd best inspect a few more of your young ladies. Good day, then, Miss Hunter. I'm afraid you must consider yourself struck from our list. You can hardly expect us to exert ourselves to find another such opening for you. But, Miss Stoper... Good day, Miss Hunter. Uh, just a minute, Miss Stoper. Let's not be too hard on the young lady. Uh, after all, my request was a bit sudden. Perhaps, Miss Hunter, you'd like uh, 24 hours in which to consider the matter. And in view of the fact that you have particularly beautiful hair, I... Uh, I might be willing to raise the salary to a hundred and twenty pounds a year to to recompense you for our little eccentricities. Unusual, my very unusual, my dear Miss Hunter. What do you make of it, Watson? Well, perhaps the gentleman's wife's a lunatic, and he wishes to humour in her fancies to, in order to prevent an outbreak. Possibly, Watson. Possibly. But the money, Mister Holmes, the money. Oh, and I need it so. Well, yes, the pay is good. Too good. Why should they give you 120 pounds when they could have their pick for 40? There must be some strong reason. But I... I have no choice. Then you've made up your mind to accept? I must. I thought if I told you the circumstances, you would understand afterwards if... Well, if I wanted your help. I should feel so much stronger if I knew you were behind me. Yes, you may carry that feeling away with you. And if at any time you should find yourself in Danger? Danger? But what danger could there be? My dear Miss Hunter, it would cease to be a danger if we could define it. But remember, at any time, day or night, just telegraph and I'll come to your help. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Do you realize, Watson, it's been almost a week since Miss Hunter called and we haven't heard a word from her? I don't like it. Oh, nonsense, Holmes. She seemed to be a young lady who is quite capable of taking care of herself. Just the same, I should never have permitted an unprotected female to accept a situation like that. Data. If I only had some data. Can't make bricks without straw. Well, at any rate, nothing very dreadful can happen out in the open country like that. That is where you're wrong, Watson. It's my experience that the vilest alleys in London do not present a more dreadful record of sin than does the smiling and beautiful countryside. Holmes, you give me the creeps. The pressure of public opinion is greatest in the towns. There's no lane so vile that the scream of a tortured child or the flood of a drunkard's blow does not beget sympathy and assistance from the neighbours. But the countryside, my dear Watson, filled with its lonely houses, think of the hellish cruelty, the, the hidden wickedness. Had our young friend gone to live in Winchester, I should not have this fear for her safety. It's the five miles of country which make the danger. See what that is, Watson. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hudson. It's uh, a telegram for you, Holmes. Give it to me. It's from Miss Hunter. Uh, well, what does she say? Come at once. We'll meet you at the Black Swan Hotel, Winchester, at three this afternoon. And at my wit's end, don't fail me. What do you suppose has happened? Hurry, Watson, we have no time to lose. There's a train from Waterloo Station in half an hour. If only we get to her in time. Yes, there's the black swan opposite the station. And if I'm not mistaken, that is Miss Hunter waiting for us on the steps. Oh, Mr. Holmes, it's so kind of you to come. And you too, Dr. Watson. I can't tell you how anxious I've been. I... But there, there, Miss Hunter. I, uh, Watson, you'd better handle this situation. You're better with hysterical women than I am. Holmes, you are a cold-blooded fish. It's not hysteria. It's relief. It's all right, Miss Hunter. We are here, you know. Uh, I'm really not as foolish as I sound. It, it's just that the strain of the last two weeks. But I'll tell you about that as we go along. There's a shortcut to the copper beaches through the woods. Come along, then. Now, Miss Hunter, if you'll tell us what's been happening since you arrived at the Rue Castle household. Well... Copper Beaches is a large, sinister-looking house, almost completely surrounded by woods. It depressed me from the moment of my arrival. 
I was met at the door by Mr. Rucastle and his wife. And is she... No, Mr. Holmes. She is not mad. I see. She's a small, pale-faced woman, much younger than Mr. Rucastle. In fact, I gather that she's his second wife. There was a daughter by the first marriage, a girl now over 20, but she's not living at the house. Mr. Rucastle said that she could not get along with her stepmother, so he sent her to America, to Philadelphia. America? How extraordinary. And uh, does Mrs. Rucastle strike you as a difficult woman to get along with? Oh, no, Mr. Holmes. She's shy and rather quiet. More than once I've surprised her in tears. At first I thought it might be worry over the disposition of her child. What's the matter with his disposition? Well, he's badly spoiled. He's an ungovernable temper and seems to take a great delight in torturing birds and small animals. Mm, pleasant little beast. And the rest of the household? There's only one servant. Toller is his name. A rough, uncouth man with a perpetual smell of drink about him. Why they keep him, I don't know. Except perhaps because he's the only one who can manage Carlo. Carlo? Carlo is a huge underfed mastiff that's kept chained in the stables during the day. But at night they let him out. He's a terrible beast. Even Mr. Rucastle is afraid of him. Well, I'm sure he'd tear any trespasser to bits. Mm. I wonder why Mr. Rucastle desires such ferocious protection. I'm sure I don't know. Unless... Unless there is something on the top floor of the West Wing that he wants to hide. The West Wing, eh? Yes. The door that leads into it is opposite my room. It's kept securely locked. I have noticed Mr. Rucastle going in and out a couple of times. The windows of that wing are all shuttered, too. And locked from the inside. Mm, looks nasty to me, Holmes. Watson, don't interrupt. Well, the second day after my arrival, immediately after breakfast, Mr. Rucastle asked me to put on a dress which had been laid out on the bed for me. What was it like? It wasn't a new dress, Mr. Holmes, but the material was excellent and of a particularly brilliant shade. An electric blue. Oh, charming colour, what? I put it on and went down to the living room. Mr. Rucastle had placed a chair for me by the front window. Sit here with your back to the window. You may read this book aloud. <laughs> a French novel. I, I think we'll uh, find it most uh, amusing. After an hour or so, you may go back upstairs and change to your own clothes. But, Mr. Rucastle, I don't understand. Who asked you to understand? Just do as I say. Strange. Very strange, Miss Hunter. I've had to sit there in the window for an hour every morning since then. As time passed, I became more and more curious. Why were they so careful to keep my face turned away from the window? Naturally, I was consumed with desire to see what was going on behind my back. Well, today I devised a means. I noticed at breakfast that Mr. Rucastle had had quite a few drinks. A happy thought seized me. My hand mirror had been broken. I concealed a piece of it in my handkerchief and later in my book, feeling sure that Mr. Rucastle was too drunk to notice. By holding the book up, I was able to see everything behind me. And what did you see? At first, there was nothing. At the second glance, however, I saw a young man in a grey suit leaning against a railing which bordered our field. He was looking earnestly in my direction. Mr. Rucastle must have noticed my surprise, for he burst out angrily. Really, Miss Hunter, your attention must be wandering. That's the second time you've read that passage. Furthermore, there's an impertinent fellow up the road who keeps staring at you. Is it a friend of yours? Oh, no, Mr. Rucastle. I don't know anyone around here. Well, kindly turn around and motion him to go away. But wouldn't it be better not to notice Do him? as I tell you. I really don't encourage you to have any followers. Oh, very well, Mr. Rucastle. There. Hmm. Impertinent fellow. That'll be all for this morning, Miss Hunter. Be good. But, Mr. Rucastle, I hope you don't think... Go that... to your room, I say. Yes, sir. And after this, you needn't bother to wear that blue dress. <laughs> Holmes, but on the way up, I noticed that the west wing had the key still in the lock. Oh, Rucastle must have been drunk to forget that, eh, Holmes? Quiet, Watson. I'll admit my curiosity was greater than my sense of caution. I opened and mounted the stairs to the attic. In the hall at the top of the house, I found three doors. The middle one barred with the end of an old iron bedstead. Good Lord. It was terribly spooky up there. Once something brushed against my face. <gasps> oh! Must have been a bat. Oh dear. Is it is there anyone in there? Who's there? Can I help you? Oh. 
Oh. <gasps> it was you, then. I thought it must be when I saw the door open. Oh, oh Mr. Rukos, I... I'm so frightened. <laughs> My dear young lady, what frightened you? Well, I, I was foolish enough to come into this vacant wing, but it's so lonely and eerie, and a bat swooped down into my face. Is that all? What? Well, what else could there be? Why do you suppose I keep that door locked? Well, I, I'm sure I don't know. It's to keep people out who have no business there, you see. Well, I, I'm sure if I'd known... I... Well, you know now, my dear young lady. And if you ever put your foot over that threshold again, I'll throw you to the mastiff. What a dreadful experience. Mr. Holmes, I feel sure there's someone locked in that room. Someone who's unhappy, perhaps tortured. Oh, good heavens, it's almost five. I promised to be back by six. Mr. and Mrs. Rucastle are going out. Mr. Rucastle should discover where I've been. You've acted like a brave and sensible girl, Miss Hunter. Yes, indeed you have. Dr. Watson and I will hang around until the Rucastles have left. Well, that should be around seven. Good. I don't imagine the Mastiff will be let loose until they return. Oh, no, Mr. Holmes. It will be too dangerous for them to get back to the house. Excellent. We'll hope the Toller's still drunk. At any rate, you must get us into the house. We must explore the West Wing. I'll do my best, Mr. Holmes. And now I must hurry. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye, Miss Hunter. Well, my dear Holmes... What do you make of it all? The blue dress and the man in front of the house. Obviously, they've had her impersonating someone. Someone young, whose hair had been cut off during an illness. That someone is probably the person imprisoned in the West Wing. How sinister. That is not the most sinister part of Miss Hunter's story, Watson. No? <clears throat> what is then? The unpleasant disposition of the child. But what has that got to do with it? My dear Watson, as a medical man, you're always gaining light as to the tendencies of a child by a study of the parents. Heredity is a science that can be worked backwards as well. You can get a good insight into the character of the parents by studying the children. This child is cruel, abnormally cruel. He probably inherits it from one of his parents. I only hope nothing serious happens before seven o'clock. Gracious, what a night. The first thunderstorm of the season. Say, listen to that dog. He has an ugly temper. Look at the copper beaches swaying in the wind. Yes, there's Miss Hunter standing in the front doorway. She's waving to us. The coast must be clear. Come in, come in. Goodness, you must be soaked to the skin. What's that pounding? It's Toller. He was just going out to release the dog. I sent him to the wine cellar, then locked him in. Splendid. I managed to get Toller's keys this afternoon, too. He was quite drunk. They're duplicates of Mr. Rue Castle's. Better and better. But come along upstairs. We have no time to waste. You got your revolver handy, Watson? Yes. Good. Good heavens. That lightning must have hit near here. One of the copper beaches, no doubt. Now, which key? Ah, oh, this one, I fancy. That's right. Here. Come along. Listen to that rain on the roof. The middle door, you said. Hello in there. No answer. I don't like that. Watson, help me remove this bedstead. Right. That's right. It's tied at one end. Cut the rope. That's it. The, the door's locked. We must break it in, then. Come on. One, two, two three... Hello. There's no one here. That villain, Lucas, must have made away with his prisoner. That's your right. She's probably been carried off. But how? Through the skylight. It's still open. Shove that table over here. All right. What are you going to do? Stand on it, of course. Yes. Two pairs of footprints. There's a ladder resting against the eaves. So that's how he did it. But that's not possible. The ladder wasn't there when the Rue Castles went away. Then he must have come back. Come a dangerous back. and clever man. Listen. Listen. Yes, I think I hear his footsteps on the stairs. <gasps> oh, Mr. Holmes! It's Mr. Rue Castle! He'll kill us all! I thought I'd find you here. Villain, what have you done with your daughter? I'm the one that should ask that, you thieves, you robbers. I've caught you. I'll fix you. Carlo! Carlo! I'll fix you. He's gone for the dog. We'll be torn to shreds. Quick, Watson, we must close the front door. Let me out! Let me out! It's Tonner. Here are the keys, Miss Hunter. Let him out. All right. Help! Help! He's killing me! It's Carlo. He's got Rue Castle by the throat. Quick, 
Watson. Give me your revolver. Careful you don't hit the man by mistake. Shut up and stand back, Watson. Oh, Mr. Holmes. Oh, thank heavens you've done it. You've killed Carla. Oh, I thought it was too late. Oh, it's too horrible. I think I feel... No, 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 Miss Hunter. You're out of danger. Just you go upstairs and take your bag. Dr. Watson and I are going to take you back to town with us on the nine o'clock train. Now, Watson, suppose you see if there's anything you can do for that villain, Rue Castle. He's not worth saving, but I suppose your conscience won't rest unless you have a try at it. Oh, my God. 